Psalm 142. Uh, we're just going to read the whole psalm. The Bible says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me, no man cared for my soul. I cried unto the Lord, or I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, it's been an unusual service. But Lord, it's still a privilege to be able to come to your house. Lord, it's a blessing to have a copy of the Word of God. It's a blessing to assemble with God's people and sing praise unto thee. It's a blessing to have a missionary called to go to Puerto Rico in our presence tonight. And Lord, him and his dear family is set to go. And Lord, uh, thank you for allowing us to help them get a little bit closer in their full support. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless us now. Help us from the word of God. Meet every need of every heart and every life. I pray for those that are sick. I pray that, Lord, you'd be with Miss Debbie and Miss Kathy. Lord, you'd be with Brother Thad. You'd be with Miss Lynn. I pray for Preacher Ford who had his leg amputated. You'd be with him. I pray for the Jubilee going on at Crossroads. You would bless there. And, Lord, we certainly pray for traveling mercies in a little bit. Lord, I pray as we go, we get our cup full. And, God, if you, the manna falls on us, Lord, we'd be a help to those people. Now, Father, you know what we stand in need of. I pray that you would show yourself big. I pray that you'd help your people, and I pray you'd get glory to your name. God, if there's any amongst us tonight unsaved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. And, Father, we certainly pray you'd get glory to your name. Father, we bless you. Thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I want you to notice... In this psalm, it is a psalm of David. I want you to notice a few things. I want you to notice, first of all, David's plea. We see in verse number 1, he said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. Can I help you with something? It's one thing to have a good friend you can lean on. It's one thing to have a good spouse you can lean on. It's one thing to have a good church that you can uh, be transparent and lean on. But there's nobody you can lean on like the Lord Jesus. Uh, oh, and friend, when you can learn that regardless of what state you find yourself, whether on a mountaintop or whether on a valley, He is a friend uh, that stick is closer than a brother. Uh, and when you call upon Him, Lord, uh, He not only hears your uh, uh, needs and uh, 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 is worthy to lean upon, but He can actually change your situation. We see His plea. I want you to notice, secondly, uh, his pouring. Look at verse number 2. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. Notice he said, I poured out my complaint. In other words, David is complaining to God. Now, he's not complaining about how God has treated him, but he is complaining and he's complaining to the Lord. Can I say this? The Lord's a pretty good person to complain to. Uh, you shouldn't complain to somebody else about something that's going on in your life or something that's going on around the church or that sort of thing. You might hurt that person's feelings or you might uh, hurt their spirit or you might become a hindrance or stumbling block. Uh, one of the worst things God's people can do is go outside the church and in the company of lost people begin to complain. Uh, 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 it don't matter if you're complaining about something that uh, uh, maybe is worthy to be complained about. Uh, but as God's people, we're to be a light to this dark world. We are to be a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Uh, they ought to see something different in us. Uh, they ought 
ought to see when uh, the bottom falls out of our life, uh, all they find out of our lips is praise unto God, uh, not complaint. Uh, David uh, uh, is setting a great example. Uh, uh, you ought to complain to the Lord. Uh, let Him know what's going on in your life. huh? And what may, might happen is He might just give you the key to your heart and show you that your complaint is without merit because you are faring much better than you deserve. You are reaping but much better than you have sowed. Uh, and I have found that if I, I complain to the Lord, it's not very long that the Lord just lets me know that I have nothing really to complain about. We see hmm, His plea. We see His pouring. Notice His path in verse 3. It says, When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. And the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. Can I help you with something? The Lord knoweth the way that I take. Yeah. You know, a lot of times we don't know what way we're headed. You know, I have a good inkling that here in a little bit I'm going to get on 75 South, uh, and I'm going to hit Knoxville, and I'm going to take 640, and then I'm going to get on 40. But that may not pan out. There have been times that I've thought what path or what road that I was going to take only to find out there might be a blockage ahead uh, and I may have to take another path uh, or another way. Uh, but help, let me help you with something, friend. Uh, it doesn't matter what GPS uh, you have, uh, whether you got it on your phone, uh, whether you use Waze, uh, whether you use Google Maps, uh, whether you got an old Tom Tom like me. Uh, it don't matter. Uh, God knows which way you're taking. Uh, and sometimes He leads you a different way because He knows what way is best. Uh, there is nothing that has ever occurred to God. It may be enlightening to you, an eye-opening to you, but not to God. Before you was, He knew. Hmm. We see His path. Notice His proscription. Verse 4. Looked on my right hand, and behold, there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. Now this is a sad statement right here. No man cared for my soul. The word proscription means an abandonment. Now, there's a lot of things in this psalm I can identify with David on. But I can never say that there's ever been a time in my life that somebody didn't care for me. I've never been that place. The Lord has always blessed me to have somebody around that cared. But David is abandoned. And David's own words said that no man cared for his soul. Now we're talking about a man that had 600 that forsook their homes to become his men. We're talking about a man that had some 30 mighty men of valor. We're talking about a man that had three of those uh, mighty men of valor that fought through Philistines all night uh, uh, just to get a drink of water out of the well of Bethlehem, then fought through th Philistines all the way back to David uh, and gave him a drink of water because he pined for it. Uh, but David is at a spot now where no one cares for his soul. Maybe this happens when he comes back from Ziklag and all their wives have been taken and all their children's taken and they wanted to stone him. Remember those days? And the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. Maybe in his complaining he found out how good God was to him. I want you to notice David's portion in verse 5. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. David gets real honest in verses 5 and 6. If there's any way I can help you tonight, the best place you can ever be with God is a place of honesty. He already knows. And a lot of times he's just waiting for us to admit where we are. That song Brother Clint sang about a secret place, a lot of that is just dealing with being honest before God. And David, when he realizes that no one cared for his soul, he makes a great admittance. 
he says, Lord, you're my portion in the land of the living. And then he admits that his persecutors are stronger than him. Do you know why the Lord helped him? Because he humbled himself. God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We're talking about David the warrior. We're talking about David that had his tens of thousands. We're talking about the giant killer. We're talking about a man that when his name was mentioned, there were whole uh, 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 nations that would tremble. And David said his persecutors are stronger than him. He admitted that he wasn't anything without God. Can I help you with something? Neither are we. But then I want you to notice David's prison. Look at verse 7. He says, Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall come past me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. See, David's looking ahead to better times, better days, when the righteous will be around him, and they together will praise the Lord bountifully. But David makes a great admission here. He says, bring my soul out of prison. Have you ever been walking about free, maybe even be in a church service, but feel like your soul is bound? David is in a place where he feels like his soul is in prison. I got to thinking about David in this psalm. Can I say he's in a cold place? Might have been in a cave or a den. He's in a hard place. There's nobody chanting his name with praise in this place. He's in a dark place. His soul feels bound. He's in a lonely place. You ever been there? Well, I've been there. I've been where it's hard putting one foot in front of another. I've been to where you feel like you're carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. You ever been there? Well, David's there. But I'm interested in verse number 5. Everything in the first four verses is that cold, hard, hard, dark, lonely place. But things change in verse number five. Verse number five, David comes to an omission of some things, and by the end of this psalm, he is already looking forward to when he's going to be praising God with the, with the righteous. So what happens in verse number five? I cried unto thee. Well, can I help you something? When you begin to pour out your heart before God, business about ready to pick up. He told us to boldly come to the throne of grace that we might obtain help in time of need. We might obtain grace in time of need. We might obtain mercy in time of need. We might obtain Him in time of need. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. You see, before then, he's looking around and nobody cares for him and he's overwhelmed and he's got persecution, he's got all these problems. But he cries unto the Lord and he tells the Lord, Lord, you're my refuge. I don't need a warm and fuzzy place. I don't need a well-lit place. I don't need a comfortable place. I don't need a happy place. You're my refuge. You're my portion. I'll just hang out with you, Lord. It'll be all right. Hmm? And I want to preach for just a few minutes. I'm, I'm, I preach more than I will preach. I haven't even really preached, but I'm going to get, just throw this out at you. The Lord is my refuge. Hmm? No matter where you are, no matter what you face, no matter what comes against you, if you can keep in your mind, the Lord is my refuge. No matter what uh, 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 comes your way, no matter how difficult, no matter how dark, no matter how depressing, uh, no matter what goes on, uh, no matter the weight, no matter the, uh, uh, the change, no matter uh, 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 what folks may say, if you can be of the mindset, the Lord is my refuge, you'll find some help in your time of need. 
I got to thinking about that the other day, and I looked that up. The refuge really has four definitions. Four definitions. Can I say, first of all, the Lord is my refuge. He's my shelter. Hmm? He's the one that shelters me from the heat of the battle. He's the one that shelters me from danger. Uh, he's the one that shelters me from the hand of the enemy. Uh, hey, I dwell under the shadow of a great rock. Uh, hey, I uh, uh, abide under the wings of, uh, of the great and wonderful one. Uh, hey, uh, no matter what, if I can just get in Him, uh, hey, I'm in His hand. His hand's in the Father's hand. Uh, hey, the enemy may pursue me, but he can't get me uh, because the Lord is my refuge. He's my shelter. He's my dependence. He's everything I need tonight. The Lord is my refuge. He's my shelter. Uh, too many people are looking for something in this life to bring them cover and bring them joy and to bring them something their life is missing. You know what they need? The Lord. He's my refuge. He's my shelter. Can I say this? the word refuge also means stronghold? He's my stronghold. He's my fortress. He's my rock. He's my fort. Uh, are you listening? Uh, 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 he's the one uh, uh, who uh, hedges me in. Uh, hey, and the devil can't break the hedge of God. Uh, what a blessing to know. Uh, hey, even the devil told jo the God that Job was hedged in in the blessings of God. Uh, I'm glad I got a stronghold. Uh, I'm glad my stronghold's greater uh, uh, than any that come come against him. Uh, can I say about my Lord? Uh, he's never even been challenged, let alone defeated. Uh, he's a stronghold that is Lord of Lords, uh, King of Kings. Uh, he spoke, uh, and the worlds came into existence. Uh, he spoke, and there came light. Uh, hey, uh, he's my Lord. Uh, he's my Savior. Uh, he's my friend. Uh, he's my stronghold. Uh, the Lord is my refuge tonight. Uh, what a blessing to know that. Because sometimes you feel like you're on an island. Sometimes you feel like, you remember that message I preached one time on being in the devil's bullseye? Sometimes you feel like the devil's taking target practice and you're the bullseye. When you get to feeling that way, you just need to remember the Lord's your, your refuge. Just run to Him. You've all heard me preach on that lily. I love that message. I didn't love studying that message because back then we didn't have Google and Google, you know, Wikipedia and all that. And so I went to the library and I got a bunch of books on flowers. They look at you funny when you're a man and you get books on flowers. Maybe not today, but back then they looked at you funny. What's this guy getting all these books on flowers? Well, I want to know everything about lilies. So I found out a bunch of things on lilies. But one thing I found in lilies back in the old country, in the olden days, they used to hunt with dogs they'd get on horses and they'd have bugles and they'd send the dogs out there and the dogs uh, they'd, they'd you know find a fox and jump a fox and the fox take off running and they'd blow the horn everybody know where to hide, you know head for and uh, listen for the sound of the dogs and and uh, 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 that dog would tree that fox and somebody'd shoot it and somebody'd skin it and Clint would eat it <laughs> but they also I did not know that's also how they hunt, hunted deer but Bob, they didn't have an old 1949 pickup truck or whatever you've got sitting over there as a tree stand. You know, on the back 40 over there. And they didn't have tree stands. They had dogs. And them dogs would jump a deer and the deer would be running. But they told me that deers have this instinctive thing, preacher, that a deer knew if it could get to a lily patch and run through that lily patch that the fragrance of the lily would throw off the dogs and my dear friends we got a lily of the valley who's our refuge and next time the hounds of hell get upon your trail uh, all you got to do is run to our fortress our stronghold uh, run to him uh, they'll lose all sight of you when they get a whiff of him uh, he's our refuge he's our shelter he's our stronghold we also found this out about our refuge. Refuge is our sanctuary. 
He is our sanctuary. I'm thankful that He is not only worthy of our praise and worth our worship, but He is our literal sanctuary. Now, I don't have time to get into the temple and the tabernacle, but the temple and the tabernacle, everything about that was a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ and what He would do for us as believers in the shed blood of Calvary. And I don't have time to get into the way they would position the tribes of Israel around the tabernacle made the shape of a cross. I don't have time to get into all of that, but it's a good study. I highly recommend it. But that's just dealing with worship. I didn't say that he was our tabernacle. He's our sanctuary. And in order to understand sanctuary, you've got to understand the law of the kinsman redeemer. And you have to understand the cities of refuge. You see, my dear friends, God made provision that there were certain cities that, let's say, Colton and Fred are out playing ball and Colton rears back and throws one and Fred's not looking and it hits him. He falls back and he hits his head on a rock and he dies. Sorry, Fred. Drop dead, Fred. Here lies Fred. Hit his head on a rock and he's dead. That's you. See ya. Nice knowing you. Glad you're saved. huh? Well, you didn't mean to throw a ball and hit him and cause him to hit his head on a rock and die. But under the law under the law says you killed him even though it was an accident you killed him and here's the deal under the law an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth you killed him now his brother Owen is allowed to kill you and he'd probably do it without you killing Fred (laughs) he'd probably kill Fred if you'd let him but he's allowed to kill you. No ifs, ands, or buts. No no trial, no jury. He's allowed to hunt you down and kill you, even though it was an accident, even though you didn't mean it. But God, in His infinite wisdom, and God, in His mercy, made some cities. And it said, if you could run to the city, as long as you got in the city, Owen couldn't get you. The city became your sanctuary. It became your refuge. And as long as you were there, he couldn't get you until the high priest died. If the high priest died, they'd open the the gates of the city and those that were seeking to pay, get, get justification for the death of a loved one, they could come and get you. And oh, and I know he's little, but he's tough. He, you know why he studies all them dinosaurs? Because he likes to eat things. <laughs> all right? So, Colton, you're done. <laughs> but I got, I got, you know, think about this. Now, listen. You've made it to a city of refuge. And you're, you're allowed to be in there as long as the high priest is alive. Well, say the guy's old. Well, say he's like Brother Bob. <laughs> he's a great, 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 great grandpa. You know, it lives 10 days. That's not, that's not a good deal, is it? You're hoping they got a young high priest. Well, i got good news. Because of Jesus, he's our high priest. Amen. And he is our sanctuary. Yes. And when we get in him, even though there's an accuser out there seeking to destroy us, uh, 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 seeking our lives, uh, seeking to uh, 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 enact revenge upon us. Uh, 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 he can't get us, Brother Donald, because our high priest is never going to die. Uh, that's why he said, I'm he uh, that was uh, and that died and have the keys to death and hell. Uh, he says that I'm alive forevermore. Uh, hey, he's never going to die again. Uh, and we have sanctuary in the Lord Jesus. Uh, he's our refuge. He's our kinsman redeemer. You see, under the law, if you had a loved one die and you was in bondage, you had to have somebody come and redeem you that was a near kinsman or else everything you had could have been taken away. Mm. You see, the reason Jesus put on flesh, he had to fulfill the law. 
And we needed somebody that was a near redeemer to buy us because we were under bondage. And he had to become like us so that one day we could become like him. Uh, but it's more than just taking on f a flesh. Uh, it's more than just being a human. Uh, 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 you've got to read the lineage of Christ. You know, you know why Ruth's in, the, in his lineage? Ruth was a Gentile. Because he could only die for the Jews if all Jews were in his lineage. Uh, but hey, uh, uh, he made provision uh, that every old Gentile dog could be born again. Uh, hey, uh, he's our sanctuary. Uh, he's our redeemer. Uh, he's our refuge. Uh, he's our high priest. Uh, hey, uh, I bless his holy name tonight. Uh, I have refuge. Because my hope is not in the Baptist faith, although I'm a Baptist from my flat head to my flat feet. My hope is not just in the Bible, even though because of the Bible I know in whom do I have believed in. My hope is in Him. He's the one that saved me. He's my sanctuary and He's my Redeemer. And through the truth of the Word of God, I came to know Him. And because of Him, He gave me the promises of the Word of God. Lord's my shelter. He's my stronghold. He's my sanctuary. You're starting to get it. He's my everything, really. But then let me say this lastly. You know what refuge is? He's my serenity. The Lord is my peace. He's my peace. Without him, I wouldn't have peace. I have the peace of God, and I'm at peace with God because I've met the one who's the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus. He's my refuge. He's my peace. When things don't make sense, all i got to do is go to him. He's my peace. Hey, when, he, when things are going on and I don't know what he's doing in my life, I don't need to know what he's doing. I don't need to know every intricate detail. I don't need to know how he's going to answer. I don't need to know how he's going to do this and how he's going to do I just need to know him. He's my peace. And he gives, and Brother Phil sang about that peace that passes all understanding. Uh, he said, hey, he said, my peace I live with thee. Not peace of the world. Again. My peace. Uh, he said, be a good cheer. I overcame the world. He said, my peace I live with you. He's my peace tonight. Hmm? I don't need to know everything. I just need to know him. There's a lot of people over the years ask questions, well, what about this and what about that and how do you how about this? And how do, I don't know what about it. All I know is I know him. I just have peace. I don't need to know anything else. I just need to know him because he's my refuge. Uh, he's my refuge. He's my shelter. He's my stronghold. He's my sanctuary. And he's my serenity. He's my peace. And in all of that, and because I have him in all of that, I can worship him. I can live for him. I can tell others about him. I can be a light in a dark place because he's my refuge. And even if everybody forsook me, he won't. But isn't it wonderful when he... He's my refuge. I've learned he's other people's refuge. And through him and by him, we're connected. And isn't it a wonderful thing to know you'll never be alone in this world or the world to come? I don't care where you go. God's got people. We've got Nas here for all the way from St. Lucia. I don't know how many thousands of miles that is from here, but it's a long way. But it's an amazing thing. We've been on the island. And he'll tell you if you can get him to talk, which is a rare thing, but if you can get him to talk, he'll tell you. I go down there. I love those folks, and those folks love me. It's a crazy thing. We don't look alike. We don't sound the same. But we have a connection. We have the same refuge. We know Jesus. It's an amazing thing. I go down there, and they're excited to see me, and I'm excited to see them. It's a great thing. They're excited to see me because they know I got chocolate. That's true. Mm -hmm. But we have a great. How how does that happen? Because we know the same Savior. Huh? 
we are indwelled by the same Spirit of God. We have the same truths and the same promise, and we're headed to the same future. He's my refuge. Now, you might be here tonight. You might have come in low. You might be in them first four verses. It'd be a great day if you learn the Lord is your refuge and your portion. If you quit looking around and learn to look up and call upon Him, you'll find that regardless of the circumstances in your life, you'll find your spirit will be elevated and the prison that you're in will be broken because you have a refuge. His name is Jesus. When's the last time you thanked him for always being there? When's the last time you went to him and it, you wasn't complaining? You was just telling him how much you loved him. You was telling him how grateful you are for how, how good he's been to you. When's the last time that you just looked at him and said, Lord, I don't really care about the path as long as I'm walking it with you. When's the last time he's your refuge? And his refuge state became real in your life. My dear friends, don't wait till the bottom falls out to realize he's your refuge. You can enjoy the refuge when you're on the mountaintop. You ought to enjoy him every single day. Some are already coming. Let's stand. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation while he's picking out a song of invitation. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for being our refuge. Thank you for being comfort in our hard place. Being love in a world that hates us. Being our strength and our weakness. Being our hope and our hopelessness. Just thank you, Lord, for being our refuge. Now, Father, I don't know the heart of anybody here tonight. I don't even know my own heart. I know it's deceitfully wicked. But Lord, I know folks may be hurting here tonight. I pray you'd walk by their way and just remind them of your goodness. Maybe somebody tonight is here and they're not saved. They're outside the grace of God. God, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would convict them of their sin and through love draw them to the saving knowledge of the Savior. God, there may be somebody else with a need here tonight. Whatever it is, I pray they'd be met in Christ. I pray you'd get glory. Have your will and way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.